By now, the auditorium, with its decorative scheme of dark red and gold, is a brilliant sight as the last comers of what is obviously a capacity audience are taking their places. But in a few minutes, the bright house lights will begin to dim slowly, and the warm glow of the footlights against the great gold curtain will introduce the first notes of this afternoon's matinee performance. And throughout this country and Canada, another and a much larger audience is awaiting the performance, which they will hear by the magic of radio as the music is picked up directly from the stage and broadcast by the Texas Company. For the third Saturday afternoon in succession, our matinee opera is a revival, an opera which has not been heard at the Metropolitan since 1941. This is the only opera composed by the great Beethoven, and its name, as you know, is Fidelio, which means faithful. This is the opera in which the famous conductor Bruno Walter made his debut at the Metropolitan, and he is returning to the opera house this afternoon from a sabbatical year of absence and vacation just for the production of Fidelio. The performance today is notable for another reason, too. You will hear the opera sung in English. Not only is this the first performance in English at the Metropolitan, but it is believed to be the first time anywhere that the opera has been sung in English. The leading role in Fidelio, that of the heroic Leonora, will be sung today by Regina Resnick, the young American soprano who made such a successful debut earlier this season as another operatic Leonora, the heroine of Verdi's Il Trovatore. Kenneth Schoen, another American singer who was engaged by the Metropolitan only a few weeks ago, will make his debut this afternoon as the villain of the story, Don Pizarro. Chords of the Fidelio Overture separated by quiet, contrasting adagio measures of horns and woodwinds. And when the curtain rises on the jailer's house, we shall hear Giacchino, the young gatekeeper or turnkey of the prison, sung by John Garris, and Marceline, sung by Francis Greer.
Master, he might just as well be today.
Good morning, Master Lee. Hasn't Fidelio come back yet? No, Father. It is almost time for me to take the letters which Fidelio was to fetch to the governor. I'm awaiting him impatiently. Here he is! Here he is! Oh, what a blow! Wait! Wait! Poor Fidelio! This time you took too heavy a load. I try to do whatever I can. Yes, yes. You are a good fellow. No one could be more devoted or sensible. I like you better every day I know you. And you may be sure you shall reap your reward. Oh, do not think I do my duty for reward. Hush. Do you think I cannot reap your heart? Fidelio, 
even though I do not know who you are and where you come from, I know what I'm going to do. I, um, I shall make you my son-in-law. Oh, dear, dear, how impatient. As soon as the governor has departed, I shall have you married. You may rely on that. Oh, what new anxiety. Now, children, you love each other well and truly, do you not? Yes, but that is not all that goes to make a happy and well-ordered household. One also needs. If you have no gold without happiness, it must be But when you put what is that thing in the pool, then take the reward for that bar, for love, that power, that then you for gold, for feeling your loftiest and in your loftiest and Feeling your love, yes, sir. They want to see the top star, so I see the fame, 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 gold, fame, gold. It is the fame, fame, gold, the gold, the gold, the gold. down into the secret palace. <laughs> Nevertheless, there is one ward into which I shall hardly be able to take you. Although I know I can rely on you. Do you mean the one confining the prisoner of whom you have often spoken, Father? You have guessed it. It must be a long time since he was in prison. It is more than two years. Two years, you say? Well, he won't trouble me much longer. He can't last much longer. Oh, God in For a whole month, by Pizarro's order, I had to decrease his two days. Now for 24 hours, he has had nothing but two ounces of black bread and a half measure of water. No light. Nothing. Father dear, do not take Fidelio down to see him. He could not bear such a sight. Why not then? I have courage and strength. 
garden side. Let anyone approaching the moat be brought before me immediately. The dispatch is always the recommendations of false findings. What's this? The writing looks familiar. Let's see. I have to inform you that the minister has learned that in the state prisons of which you are the overseer, several victims of arbitrary power are confined. He begins his journey tomorrow to surprise you with an investigation. Be on your guard. <laughs> Heavens, if he should discover that I have this Florida son here in chains, whom he thought dead long ago, often try to unmask me. And yet, that is one way. One bold deed can dissipate all my fears.
with other projects. Oh, I understand, Father. Fidelio Rocco, I have already begged you several times to allow the poor prisoners who dwell here above ground to walk in our garden. Today, the weather is so lovely. Oh, yes, and I beg you too. Children, without the governor's permission. But he was speaking with you so long. Perhaps we want you to do him a favor, and then he would not be so very... A favor. You are right, Master Lino. Now that I think of it, I can take the risk. Giacchino and Fidelio, open the stairs above ground. Meantime, I shall see Pizarro, keep him away, and try to persuade him for your benefit. That is right, Father.
We must go down and work together. Hard, hard is the freedom we must spread. Down in the tools and the barren heart. no pleasant duty, it makes you shudder. Does it not? I wish I could have spared you too. But it's too much for me, I fear, and yet our mother is so strict, so strict and so dear.
I'm sure you're able to follow the story in action very readily from the stage today, especially through the unaccompanied uh, conversation, dialogue by the characters now and then in this English presentation of Beethoven's Fidelio. The encore curtains part. Here the principal, led on by John Garrett, the singing the role of Giacchino today. We have Regina Resnick as Leonora or Fidelio, who was so well applauded for her big aria in this uh, scene that just closed. He's uh, dressed as Fidelio in a belted brown sleeveless jacket over a white blouse, knickers and high top brown suede shoes, topped almost each to her knees. Here she is bowing with the others. Kenneth Schoen, who's making his debut today, is Don Pizarro, the serious and sinister looking governor of the prison in his black cloak and red and black uh, uniform with a tricorn hat and high black boots. Frances Greer, who's now making a solo bow. She is our Marceline today, in a sleeveless green bolero jacket over a white blouse, colorful apron over a blue skirt and two black velvet borders at the bottom. And Lorenzo Alvari is the gray-headed jailer Rocco. Here he is making a solo bow now. The first prisoner was Richard Manning, and the second prisoner was John Gurney. And so ends the first act of Beethoven's only opera, Fidelio, as sung and acted at a regular Saturday matinee at the Metropolitan Opera House in New York City. The entire performance of this great drama in music is being brought to listeners directly from the stage by the Texas Company.
in. The footlights are out. Here is our conductor, Bruno Walter. We'll have the first scene of the second act of Beethoven's Fidelio being given in English today.
out of this rubbish. The old well, I have told you. We need not dig far to reach the opening. Give me a pickaxe and talk. Then see. You tremble? Are you afraid? Oh no. Only it is so cold. Then get to work. Working will make you warm enough. He's awaiting you, too. No doubt. 
still have a thousand questions to ask me as usual. I must talk with him alone. Well, you have rested again a few moments. Rest? How should I find the rest? Yes, if I could only see his face. Will you always be deaf to my pleading? Tell me, at last, who is the governor of this prison? The governor of prison, Don Citaro. Citaro! The very man whose crimes I dare bring to light. Who sent as soon as possible to the mill, inquire for the honor of Lourdes. Tell the man lying here in pain. This is impossible, I tell you. I am indeed condemned to end my life here. Do not let me perish by slow starvation. Oh, Give me just a little water. Go to my heart. I got me. Be dangerous. Who is this? My helper. In a few days, my son-in-law. You are quite mad. Who could help it? You yourself, Master Rocco. True. That man has such a voice. Yes. It goes to the very depths of my heart. <laughs> Well, 
His Lordship the Minister is coming. God be praised. We are coming. We are coming immediately. Let the man with forces come down and accompany the Lord Overseer upstairs.
Walter, who has been so warmly greeted every time he has stepped into the orchestra pit this afternoon, is now being most enthusiastically applauded for his reading of the familiar and brilliant Leonora Overture No. 3, played between the two closing scenes of today's English performance of Beethoven's Fidelio at the Metropolitan Opera House in New York City and being brought to you by the Texas Company.
just a moment the curtain will rise on the sunny brilliant scene on the bastion before the entrance to the prison our last uh, scene of Fidelio today where the prisoners guards officers and onlookers are assembled to await the appearance of the Minister of State Don Fernando sung today by Hugh Thompson the audience is still applauding Mr. Walter but we continue now with the closing scene And 
paean of joy closes the performance of Fidelio. Don Pizarro is punished. Florestan is saved by the timely arrival of the Minister of State and the actions of his faithful wife, Fidelio. In just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we will present the Opera Forum Quiz. Here are the principals taking their curtain calls, led on by Arthur Caron, our Florida fan, in his dingy, torn gray shirt, black sleeveless curtain, black British, Regina Resnick, all dressed in brown as the lad Fidelio, in her high suede boots, Leonora today, Lorenzo Alvarez, he's following with them, here he is again with the others. Is the gray haired and gray bearded Jayla Rocco. Kenneth Stone making his debut today. Don Pizarro is the villain. He's dressed in red and black, a red and black uniform. And Hugh Thompson in a rather gorgeous gold braided habit, knee length coat and tricorn and golden buckle shoes is the, the Minister of State, Don Fernando. Frances Greer is with them. She sang the role of Marceline and Mr. Garrett as Jacquino. You've just heard the dramatic and triumphant ending of the story of Beethoven Fidelio, which closes with one of the most famous happy endings in all opera. The extra enthusiasm and the applause you hear from the audience is because Bruno Walter, our conductor, just took that bow with the principal. Now he's taking a bow alone. This entire performance of Fidelio was broadcast directly from the stage of Metropolitan Opera House in New York City by the Texas Company, makers of the famous Texaco Fire Chief and Sky Chief gasolines. We found wherever you see the red Texaco star and the green tea. Canadian listeners heard the opera through the courtesy of the McCall Frontenac Oil Company Limited. And now we continue our broadcast with another meeting of the Opera Forum Quiz. Our quiz master, Olin Downs, is in his place, and opposite him across the quiz table are the musical experts whose knowledge and quickness of thought will be tested by the questions Mr. Downs will fire at them. These questions, you know, are sent in from week to week by our radio listeners.